Hello fellow homebrewers, JP here, and I want to introduce to you the brand new Brewbuilt X1 Conical Series available at More Beer. More Beer sells the highest standard in homebrewing equipment, and the Brewbuilt Conicals are just that. They're made from mere polished 304 stainless steel, and they come with loads of features that you and I have been looking for. They have a full 2-inch bottom dump valve, which will eliminate your clogging issues, while the sturdy base includes four reinforced legs, just like those big pro tanks do. More Beer also carries the Brewbuilt line of options and add ons like casters, pressure kits, and even external glycol chillers. So you can find out more about the new Brewbuilt X1 Conical Uni Tanks by going over to morebeer.com for detailed videos on the entire line of Brewbuilt Conicals. You can trust Brewbuilt with your next fermentation, and you can trust More Beer to find the right conical for you. Brewbuilt at morebeer.com. This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. Everybody, welcome to the session. I'm your host, Justin Crosley, back in the studio after a pretty epic weekend here at the Hop Grenades. We got a good show planned for you today. Uh, we had our Hop Grenade 10th anniversary this past Saturday. We've been here for 10 years, and 10 wonderful breweries brewed us 10 amazing beers. And one of those breweries is here with us today, back in the studio once again after, I don't know, it's been a couple of years at least. Andy Crocker and his team from Original. Original Pattern Brewing Company. Welcome, Andy. Thank you, Justin. It's great to be here. It's great to have you back. You've been a busy person, and you've had a busy team, and so getting you back in here has has been a struggle for both of us. Uh, Yeah, it has. It's been, what, five years? No, six years. Has it been that long? Yeah, it's been since Wildcard, so... Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even realize that. No, I haven't been in with OP yet. You've been bugging me for five years, so... (laughs) (laughs) Well, actually six. Yeah, no, that's fine. It was that long. (laughs) Uh, no, stoked to be here, mate. Stoked <laughs> to be here. Well, and you've got your senior brewer uh, here with you, Evan Collins. Welcome to the studio, Evan. Hello, thank you. It's thank nice you. to have you. Long time listener, first time caller. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks for <laughs> listening. Uh, I believe you made our beer that we're going to talk about, right? Oh, uh, yeah. You, yep, br- yep, you yep, brewed br- it? Brewed it solo, dry hopped it solo. What's up? All right, well, <laughs> we've got a <laughs> lot to talk to be about. to the first turn of the day, so. I see. Okay. <laughs> Just <like> that. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. And then we've got Virginia Vaughn, uh, who's your co-director of sales i believe right virginia that's me thank you so much it's a privilege to be here happy to have you guys uh so as my listeners know and and certainly you know andy i'm just not just me but everyone here at the hop grenade just huge original pattern fans uh been been a fan of of andy's beer for a long time but you guys have just really i don't know just really dialed it in over the last couple of years i think and so just a big fan um and then as i mentioned we had our hop grenade 10th anniversary party this past weekend so uh, I never really go out and like pull the card like, hey guys, I, I need I need something back, you know, like I don't do that. But for ten years, I felt like it was important, so I I, I phoned up uh, uh, ten different breweries and and y'all said yes, uh, like just were so gracious to to make it happen. Um, so we've got one of your beer uh, beers in our glasses. It's a session IPA. Teresa's here hosting with us again. Welcome back, Teresa. Thank you. It's been a minute. I know. Yeah. It's, been, it's been so long. <laughs> we haven't done a lot of shows in here. I've done some shows out of here and 
whatnot. So it's good to have you back. Yeah, likewise. So what we've got is Session IPA from Original Pattern, which is both the style and the name, because uh, Andy named it after our show. I did name it after the show. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, and if you look at the can, it's got the Session hops all over it. It's uh, it's a super um, cool looking can. It is it, it is tied for the sexiest can I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and obviously I'm biased, but you guys in Altamont both did awesome cans using the Hop Grenade logo. Uh, and you used the Brewing Network Hop Grenade, which is slightly different from the Hop Grenade's Hop Grenade. And so the two together, uh, thank you for doing that. Like yeah, the artwork is, is nah, very, very excited. I was very stoked when you asked me. So I, I'm glad. I'm glad. And, and I'm surprised, like everybody was. And, you know, the, the reason it's a little surprising, I know that, that we're, we're friends and, and you guys like to do collabs, but it's kind of hard to get in the middle of a brewing schedule nowadays. Like you guys have this, back when I started the Brewing Network, which, by the way, is much older, it'll be 20 years next year. Ooh. I could get on people's brewing schedule like tomorrow. I just, you know, whatever. Everyone, I feel like things just weren't as planned as they are nowadays. But I think with the size that you guys have become and and just the way brewers have to address the market nowadays, you guys have like a six-month-out schedule at least, right? Uh, I wouldn't go that far. Okay. We're, uh, we're pretty lucky. We're kind of like week to week. Well, I wouldn't say week to week, but like uh, we don't have any core beers, so everything's okay. constantly rotating. So we can kind of just sub something in like, you know, I was talking with Roger from Faction on Saturday and we're going to try and do a collab. And he's like, well, when can we do it? And I'm like, I know, we're going to do it Tuesday. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so sometimes you can still just get in there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not ha- so, and that I immediately have questions for Virginia about that. When you say you don't have core beers, you know, I don't know, five or so years ago, that was way more common than it is now. And I feel like it's come back around that even breweries who, who mostly rotate still have like a core four. How do you feel about that, like from a sales perspective, not having a core? I mean, it's hard to complain with success, you know, yeah. so, um, but we do, you know, in our sales team meetings, we have kicked around the idea of having a flagship or two and talk to Andy about what, what those would be. Um, it, it, there are certain handles that mm-hmm. really, really want just one specific beer. And, yeah. and if I can, you know, I have an amazing sales team. If we can get in front of them and talk to them about how amazing having a rotating right. IPA or a rotating lager is, um, we can usually sell them on it. Sounds like a fairly easy sell, yeah. Like places like us, yeah. like it, 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 it's perfect. When we opened 10 years ago, actually, if it weren't for the Brewing Network, I don't think we would have gotten as many cool beers because most salespeople hated us for the fact that we always want, we were like, no, we're not, we're actually, you don't get a handle. Nobody gets a handle. Um, and in, in 10 years, only two breweries have, have ever gotten a handle. Um, I, I've said this many times. Russian River gets a handle because they pay my rent. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Heretic used to have a handle because Jamil Zanishev helped me start the Brewing Network. So when he opened his own brewery. But everybody else, we were like rotator. And honestly, sales reps were really annoyed with us. But when they went back to the brewery and found out, like, the brewer was like, oh, no, but it's for the it's the Brewing Network's bar? Yeah, give them whatever they want. So... Back then, it was odd to have constantly rotating. Now, every bar is like, I guess not every, as you just said, is like, please give me the newest thing. Give me a new rotator. Yeah. You know. It's the ones with the big distro beers that we come up against that are, that are tough. And I sure. always say to them, you know, hey, you, there's two different beer drinkers. There's people who want the exact same beer every time they sit down, and there's people that are excited about rotators. Yeah. And there should be room in your lineup for at least one rotating handle. Right. Agreed. Have you thought about making a steam-like beer and taking (laughs) over all of those handles in the San Francisco Bay Area, Andy? Uh, We've we've thought about it. We've thought about it. But, you know, look, in all honesty, like, it's kind of like what Virginia just said. Like, I feel like part of our success has been with our our rotating model. Yeah. Um, You know, there's not... You know, I, I catch up with the sales team at least once a month um, in a in-person meeting, and the feedback I get from them, it's just like not many bars want to buy the same beer yeah. two weeks in a row. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like that's one of the big reasons we've been so successful. You know, we brewed, I think, 256 unique beers last year. Wow. Yeah. And they, they all come back. 
You know, it's not like it's it's a one off and it's done. Sure, you know, you just a, rotate them back. They in. rotate them back in. So at the moment, we're on a, a two to three cycle of a beer a year. Okay, so nice. But the more we grow and the the more new beers we create, it's probably going to become a little less. But sure, yeah. And again, like a place like ours, we you know, there's there's a handful of breweries that we carry all the time. You're one of them. So I get to see that rotation. It's great for our customers. It's great. You know, we, we don't buy a ton of beer from any one brewery, right? But every week we buy a ton of beer, and we just have so many cans to rotate. So I'm super familiar with your brands. Like, people ask, like, how do you know? Is it because you know Andy? And I'm like, no. It's because we go through a shitload of original pattern beer, and I drink a lot of original pattern beer. So I'm very familiar with your brands, with the names. And, yeah, I do see them come back. I guess when you say it now, that sounds right to me. Like, about three times a year, yeah. I'm, I, I get some super dank or, or whatever. You yeah. Know? So. Oh, I was just going to say, like, the – to me, going through all those different beer brands and having to come up with a new label and a new skew and a new, oh my god, like that. Yeah. Do you, do you have somebody kind of dedicated uh, to that? Not really. Yeah. I look after it. You're the chief. <laughs> yeah. Neighbor of beer. I work a lot of hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is honestly when people come to me at the brewery and they're like, we really want to make this beer. I'm like, okay, yeah. So what are we gonna name the beer? That's hard. Yeah. What's the label gonna be like. Yeah. Uh, they have great names awesome. too, Teresa. I asked I the one of your uh, founders. I asked Max about this when I was at the brewery the other day. Yeah, not knowing it was you, and I was kind of the same thing. I was like, yeah, where do you guys get all these names? And he's like, Andy, man, Andy just comes up with these things all the time. <laughs> it's <laughs> my should sit and like brainstorm some names. Yeah, yeah, I've got a whole list in my phone. You, you know? do, yeah, but uh, but no, look, they they can be tough. Um, you know, being Australian, obviously, we try and lean on the Australian thing a little bit. Yeah. You know, one of the beers tonight that we'll be trying is How's the Serenity. It's from my favorite movie ever created, an Australian movie called The Castle. Okay. I highly recommend it. But if All you're right. going to see it, you've got to see the Australian version, not the US version. Yeah, I'll put the subtitles on. It's yeah. fine. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they changed half of the things in it to like make it more for the American market. But, I see. But we've got multiple beers named from that movie. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have good names. And But are, are you sort of constantly just, you know... You could be doing anything at the grocery store, and you've got to add yeah. to that list of something. Constantly. Yeah. Driving, whatever it might be. I don't text while I'm driving. But Fair. Or, yes. or type while I'm driving. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, there's, it's just constant. Okay. So, and, you know, Evan and, and Chris, my lead brewer, you know, we're just... We're just constantly shooting the shit about it. It's like nice. talking about beer, talking about new names, that sort of thing. So... Love it. And we usually come up with something fun. So let's talk about my beer before, and then we're going to go back to talking about growth and things like that. But uh, who wants to tell me all about the session IPA that's in my glass? Well, it's actually not in our glass. I have a lager in my glass. Oh, you did? Just, I thought, just I, for I, a thought I got you a session. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a great lager, whoever's lager it is. But oh, I did get this. She did pour the lager. <laughs> You're not joking. I was. No, not joking. I think I ordered. I said I need six beers. I think she gave us number six. Okay. Because you have it on the tablet. Well, it's a great lager, whoever's lager it is. It is great. So, All right, um, my bad. Well, tell us about no, the beer no, that's, that's not fine. in my glass. Okay. Um, so, yeah, look, the, the session obviously is a collab with the Brewing Network. We were super stoked and, and honored, to be honest. You know, I've known you for a long time. And, um, yeah, it was just, just a great concept, you know, kind of a homage to the show and and the whole thing so um you know we've had a lot of success with session ipas we've won gold and silver the last two years at gabf um with our session ipa and nice and, and this was kind of a new concept that we came up with you know i asked you about what sort of hops you wanted to put in it and yeah i think you said it was jason that that came up with the final uh either jason or lewis yeah okay. lewis has kind of been our hop guy around here lately but okay yeah. what did we choose uh mosaic Nectaron that's and uh idaho seven idaho that's right yeah, yeah that was a jason thing t- i think the idaho seven okay yeah which is a good call um yeah. so yeah we're, we're real stoked on this beer you know my my lead brewer chris who unfortunately couldn't make it tonight um he tried it the day after packaging and he's like god damn this is better than the next chapter yeah. which is what we've won at, at, at uh gabf for the last two years so okay 
So will you? Do you think you'll try this recipe at like rebrew it around GABF time? Uh, well, we're, we're, we've got to go for three in a row with the with the next chapter. So that'll that'll be our session entry this year. I see. Oh, oh, that you'll try to do the same one to get yeah, three in a row. Yeah, yeah, try and get three in a row with it. So. And you said you got a, a gold and a silver over the last two years, or we did. We yeah. got gold in twenty two mm-hmm. and silver in twenty three. Okay. So what do you think makes a good session IPA? I don't know. It's kind of our whole approach to beer as it is, you know, like we kind of, I came into the Bay Area brewing scene and, and had a different approach to a lo- what a lot of other breweries do in regards to what I think beer should be. And it sometimes doesn't necessarily fall into style guidelines for for GABF and World Beer Cup and that sort of thing, but just very light bodied Pilsner base. Um, you know, we do use some two row, but you know, I know a lot of a lot of breweries out there are a hundred percent two row. You know, we're kind of more seventy thirty split two row to pil- uh, pilsner to two row. But okay. our session IPAs are they're not a hundred percent pilsner, but it's pilsner and, and you know about ten percent wheat, and okay. that's about it. That's so it. just to keep it light, keep it light, dry. dry, super drinkable. Like this one finished about one percent sugar. So okay. Um, and yeah, and all but this. you don't worry then about because it's still an IPA. You don't worry about not having enough backbone for hops. You must have to hop differently so that it's not too bitter. Uh, no, not really. Like we do, you know. Like we, I'll be honest. We hop the absolute shit out of it. Out okay, of, out of our beers, we really do. Yeah. Um, you know, and and this beer here is basically hopped like a seven percent west coast ipa wow we haven't deviated from what we usually do with other beers and that's how we've been successful at gabf as well okay um so yeah you know it's about a pound per barrel on the hot side and three and a half pounds per barrel in the dry hop okay for a a 4.7 percent beer and yeah it's so i yeah i guess i just would have thought maybe you do use the same amount of hops but it's just way more later or something so that you're not getting as many ibus no no, no. You just, just keep it the same but, yeah we, but do, we do out. shoot for slightly lower ibu on these so most of our west coasts are bet- between like 70 and 85 okay and this is more like 65 so and those ibus are coming from late and boil so yeah okay yeah there's, so there's, yeah no, like when you say a pound per barrel in the kettle on the hot side it's still very much late in the boil absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's all well pulled. Yeah, no, 60 minutes um, minute, yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah, and I think I think this got a charger. Wait, wait. Did you say zero sixty minutes? Zero sixty. Zero no th- kidding. Yeah, yeah. This this one had zero, did it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So nothing at sixty. That on this surprises one. me there, right? Yeah. Like usually, even there's like an honorary amount <laughs> yeah. because it's still sixty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's so other stuff to do there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sometimes we just got to keep those IBUs in check, and with how heavy we hop the whirlpool, yeah, um, it can be difficult to keep those IBUs lower, lower based on the the alpha acid of the particular hop. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Teresa, did you ask them for this beer by chance when you went out there? You know, I did, and it just blew. She has it- this much in it. Oh, man. <laughs> I almost brought it in, but I was like, oh. I think we have a second keg of it. So, hey, Andrew. Can you go see if they'll put the session IPA on tap if we have a second keg of it? Do we have two kegs of that? We sent we you do, two. We do, right? Yeah. yeah. Let, can you get that on and then ask them to pour us some of the beer? You got it. Sorry to bug you with that. Um, yeah, we got to have this beer. Yeah. Oh, it's a solid. <laughs> it's, really yeah, it's, a, uh, it's, a solid it's a solid beer. Yeah. So. Uh, so is it just the hop varieties that deviate from your metal winning beer? Uh, it is. It's the same same base recipe yeah. okay um with yeah with the the three different hops so our award-winning beer has was uh mosaic citra and amarillo nice okay. um so this is mosaic nectar on and in idaho so and idaho so yeah okay yeah yeah i did love the beer it was uh i had a couple of go-to's on anniversary day and and this was one of them and for two reasons it's delicious and anniversary day is a marathon for me, so I gotta, I gotta, you know, you gotta mix in some lower ABVs there, right? Yeah. Like I was here from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. and I'm not saying I was sober when I left, but I was able to make it to leaving. Right. You don't want to be found just asleep at the bar on your birthday, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So also, I think, and it's kind of why I was stoked to have this. 
there's not a lot of session IPAs anymore. No. Nah. They had like a moment of fashion, right? Like when um, Firestone Walker had one that I really liked. I can't even remember the name of it anymore. But um, anyway, it was wonderful. And they were like, yeah, this isn't selling anymore. Yeah. So they kind of like went out of favor. But you're like, you're doubling down on it. You don't mind. Yeah, look, it's, it's tough. And Virginia may be better off answering this question. But, you know, look, we, we brew it in our smallest tank. And we basically, which is a 20 barrel tank. So we basically brewed 20 barrels at a time. After we won GABF Gold a couple of years ago, we brewed a 40 of it and it hung around way too long. Um, okay. So it's not, it's not an easy sell. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, it's like I was saying to the sales team on, sa- on Friday in the meeting, it's like, you know, the best way to sell this beer is it's, a, it's literally the only difference between this and a 7% IPA is less malt. Okay. It is hopped. It is just so aromatic and yeah, yeah, it's gorgeous. So you can do a little health kick with it. You're like, that's hey, right. less calories, <laughs> same hops, low carbs. Yeah, I don't know. That's what I would. Yeah, yeah. Like call it low carb <laughs> session or something. Okay. But is it still true, Virginia, that almost anything with the acronym IPA on it is still going to sell, right? Or are they uh, really that concerned about like the low ABV? So, first of all. I was turning down people right and left today for this beer. Wow. We, mm-hmm. we should have brewed a 40 barrel. Amazing. For sure. Yeah. That was a couple of years ago that, yeah. that that happened and winter. But, you know, sure. in the summer, a 40 barrel of session would go pretty nicely. I think the big problem with the lower ABVs, and, and we see it in loggers sometimes as well, although our logger program is my favorite. I actually came on loving IPAs, and your IPAs are amazing. Mm-hmm. But... Um, the lager program is so good that now I'm just, I'm so gone on our lagers. Nice. However, um, selling a low ABV um, beer in a can yeah. is tough. I so see. Um, selling selling a session IPA and keg is no problem. I mean, those are gone immediately. Okay, I see. Cans, people, you know, if people are going to go get a four pack and it's going to be an expensive four pack, they're probably going to go for a little bit of a heavier punch. Sure. Such weird times we live in because, especially in the in the in the, in the world, but in the industry, <laughs> yes, because we we are seeing these this kind of health conscious thing happening, right? So you'd think automatically, hey, I'm listening to you. Here's a lower alcohol beer, right. but at the same time, and I think this is exactly like your point. If you're going to spend the money, then why not have more alcohol? Why not have double, almost double the alcohol if it's the if it's the same price? Right. But I don't know how those I don't know how people talk to themselves about those two contradicting things, you know? Because um, I just buy the I, I guess I'm different. I'm just a beer nerd, right? So I buy the beer I like, and if I'm feeling like a session IPA and I know it's great, you pay the money for that. I'm not I'm not buying drunkenness. I'm buying the beer that I like. Right? Drunkenness is a fun byproduct if it happens, <laughs> but you know. I so. think for. The word session is the issue. And I think it's kind of what happened to a lot of beer styles like root IPA. Like mm-hmm. a crisp enzyme I- IPA is like actually quite delicious if you do it right. But a lot of people made session IPAs that were like hoppy, super thin, like hop yeah. with no backbone, just bitter and right. nothing else. And so it turned a lot of people off of session IPAs. That makes sense. A bit of some failures. Yeah, it's like... It's like if the average is not great, yeah. then you might just attribute that style as being problematic, but it's not really the case. You know, if it's well made, it's going to be good. And that's probably, I mean, that's what is going to hold up your sales yeah. <laughs> this yeah. year because they were like, well, original pattern. Of course they know how to make this kind of beer. Right. Plus that yeah. really cool looking can. For sure. I mean, <laughs> like, yeah. That's going to sell some session <laughs> ideas right there. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of contradictory too, right? Like, it's low alcohol and called a session, but there's a hop grenade on it. Like it kind of says the other. It's 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 the perfect marketing, I think, for this contradiction I'm talking about. It's a great can. <laughs> it's going to fly off the shelves, absolutely, no doubt. Especially you know because of the collab. Yeah, it's a yeah. really cool collab. Love it. All right, why don't we do this? We're going to take a quick break because uh, I want to talk more about the other beers that you brew and and the kind of crazy growth that you've had. And I want to get one of these beers in my class, too. So uh, we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to the session right here on The Brewing Network, and we'll be right back. 
The leader in affordable, high-quality kegerators is here. Introducing Comos, the kegerator designed with serious beer drinkers in mind. It features an all-stainless steel draft tower, a major upgrade over traditional chrome-plated brass towers, and Comos keeps your new tower cold with their air-cooled tower fan, wrapping your beer lines in frigid coolness. Your beer is poured from innovative forward-sealing faucets that don't leak, so they stay cleaner for longer. Dual gas inlets on the rear of the fridge allow you to run both CO2 and nitrogen gas. Serve your beer with CO2, serve your kegged wine, or even cocktails with nitrogen. The digital temperature display has the largest range available, allowing you to use the Comos Kegerator for fermentation if you need to. And now Comos Kegerators ship with duo-tight draft fittings for that click-to-connect assembly we've all dreamed of. Buy direct from ComosDraft.com and receive free shipping on your order. That's K-O-M-O-S Draft.com. Welcome back to the session. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And hey, thanks to our sponsor, More Beer, who brings you this show and every show that we do. More Beer's been with us forever, almost 20 years, as I mentioned. Go to morebeer.com. Check out their brew-built line of jacketed conicals. They're so dope. Uh, You can be a professional brewer at home with their brew-built jacketed conicals. Or go check out their website for the deal of the day. Uh, Forget Amazon Prime Day. Although if you do, shop through the Brewing Network link. Um, but go to the More Beer website, and they have a daily deal every single day, and it's cool stuff on there, too. Go to More Beer, morebeer.com, and check it out. All right, we're still here hanging out with the original Pattern crew, and we've got the correct beer in our glass, which uh, <laughs> as always makes my job easier, and then uh, and some other beers in our glass, too. But quickly, just wanted to, Teresa, at least, to taste through the Session IPA with us, and come on, tell me that this is not like a hit out of the park, right? Uh, it's- Beautiful. I just brought it up to my face, and it was like mm-hmm. a big burst of juicy, good hops there. And I feel like, just to go back to it again, just to harp on it for a second, if people didn't think about it or didn't know the ABV, they'd just be like, it's a damn good IPA. Thanks for that. Yeah. It's, we just we psych ourselves out with this, you know, the information that we are required by law to put on our cans yeah. <laughs> and, kegs, and kegs. Um, but it's just such a good beer. Like yeah. I think that hop combo is pretty darn good. Oh, you know, it came out great. Um, you know, Nectaron's a fairly new hop to us, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, it's it, it's it's a very intense hop, and it's uh, it it combines really well with the Idaho Seven. And I think I said this last time I was on the show too. Uh, for any home brewers out there, just put mosaic in everything because it'll make it taste better. <laughs> it so, just does, right? Oh, uh, we just put mosaic in, in almost everything. So, so <laughs> and I know that about you, and I know that about uh, Liquid Gravity as a, a brewery that I really like that does the same thing. They're just even when they write a recipe without it on the day of the brew, he can't help himself. Yeah. He still ends up putting mosaic yeah. in there. We added mosaic to our um, Altamont collaboration, great grenade juice, but and they're also big fans. But they made a last minute decision. They they did a they did a put in a pinch hitter and went for Simcoe. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I can't be mad about Simcoe either. No. I mean no. it's mosaic Sim- or Simcoe's Simcoe. our favorite hop this year. Well, is this it? is no. mosaic a, a daughter of Simcoe or think so. something like it that. Is. They're like lineages yeah. related. They are. So all right. Well, this is just plain delicious. Um, we've also got, and we can just pass that around now, too. We've got one of your loggers. Um, and I think this is a good time to talk about how much you guys have grown, too, because um, we're going to talk about some of those growth numbers. But you're still a, a relatively small facility uh, as a brewery, yet you love doing loggers. Um, so let's come back to that question in a second, because I, I want to leave that kind of on the table by saying, I think when you started at Original Pattern, how many years ago? Uh, so they opened in May of 2018, and I took over September of 2018. Okay. Yeah. And about how many barrels a year do you think they were putting out then? So I think that first year we put out maybe just a few hundred. Just, okay. Yeah. yeah. So maybe Probably four, under 500. Probably. probably under 500, maybe 600 at the most. Okay. So. And in the same, basically the same building you're in now. Yeah. How many do you think you'll do by the end of, of 24? Uh, so last year we brewed 13,500. Wow. Okay. Um, and the way things are going this year with Virginia and her team absolutely killing it, we're probably looking at about 18, I'd say, for 16 to 18. That's incredible. And then we'll max out at 20. So we always joke that we make the most beer per square footage of any brewery in the country. And it might not be a joke. No, it's it's almost not a joke. Yeah. Um, you know, we 
recently took over the old independent brewing at the back of at the back of where the brewery is so we we've landed some more square footage now but, okay um honestly like we were doing ten thousand barrels in year three in just our space anyone that's been to our space has seen it's not a big space yeah um, it's no you're crammed in there that's yeah. for sure and so, and even your brew house is not that big how many barrel is the brew house it's a 20 it's a 20 well so you're it's, an, doing... it's an oversized 15 we, we knock out 22 barrels each time so so two brews to fill your big fermenters right two turns uh, four turns four turns oh four turns yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Long so all days. our fermenters are sixties and 80, 80 barrel, sixty and eighty barrel fermenters. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, but they've obviously come along the journey. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's so, so much beer. It is. So we do three to four turns every day. Okay. So so now we can go back to my question. We can talk about the beer in our glass. Like I'm, I'm just really surprised. I'm not surprised that you like lagers, Andy. I'm just surprised that you have time for them and space. Uh, we just make it work. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, lagers are. Uh, I love lagers, especially our, our Czech Pilsner, which we're we're about to try. Um, you know, I went to brewery school in England, and I was over there doing a four month program. And in my two month, oh sorry, my uh, at the end of the two months, we had a, a week break, and I went. I was poor. I was really, really poor. Okay. Um, traveling on the Australian dollar in the UK at about 48 pence to the Australian yeah. dollar. I wow. was extremely poor. So I went to Prague where it was 80p for a, for a Pilsner. Go. Yeah. So I went there for a week and just drank Pilsner a week. And, and fell in love with it. Absolutely fell in love with it. Got talking to some brewers there, told them what I was doing at school. And and I can honestly say, like, this is this is – Probably as traditional a Czech Pilsner that you can that you could possibly make. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, I love this beer. Oh, I love it. It's it's a, it's one of my number ones. So just a little bit of sweetness in there. Just a little bit, a little bit of breadiness from the from the Vienna, and you know it's pretty simple. It's just German Pilsner malt, German Vienna malt, and um, some Czech sars. Just sars. Just hundred percent Czech sars. Okay. So. All the way through the boil, not like just late edition. You're it's, back it's to late traditional, edition. right? Oh, it's still? it is. It's late edition. Really, Evan? Yeah. Yep. When what beer do you put in a sixty minute hop? West Coast. Oh, I mean, you we, do? We, okay. Well, well, I mean, not a hop, but a tin. This is, this is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like the new hop products. <laughs> yeah. Basically. So we, we use a lot of CO two extract. Uh, basically, all our bittering is is done with Columbus CO two extract. It's just so clean. There's no vegetal matter. Um, so that's that's how most of our bittering. But, but done. same with like that that session in this beer, like you get that firm bitterness, even though it's late. It's it's not a cold late whirlpool. Okay, it's, it, it's still pretty hot. It's still hot. Okay, yeah. And that is kind of the difference. Like one of our collaborations with Russian River is called Cool Pool Pale, mm-hmm. because of this kind of new technique happening with a cooler hop addition in the in the whirlpool. So you're saying if you're still keeping it hot like that traditional whirlpool, you're yeah. you're pulling IBUs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. Just like you you guessed, it probably had a sixty or something, but like yeah, it yeah. didn't. It, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we haven't quite bought into the cold whirlpool thing, except for with obviously hazy IPAs to try and extract a little more of that juicy lower IBU extraction. Okay. Um, How so long yeah. in the tank for this beer? Uh, this beer, so all our lagers are, uh, you know, as I said, I went to brewery school in England. My lecturer was a brewing god. Mm, um, nice. And uh, they're all very traditional. So it's uh, for, uh, it's more like 60 days. 60 days 60 still. days, yeah, on all the lagers. So See, again, my question stands. I don't know how the hell you pull that off. <laughs> That's just wild to me. Yeah. I think any of our growing brewers listening would say the same thing. Not that they don't want to do it, but yep. that just sounds very difficult. Yeah. Well, we, so <laughs> up until the expansion next door um, into the old independent space, like we, we always, I always had two bright tanks in the brewery. Okay. And those bright tanks were lagering tanks. That's all they were just used that, for. Yeah. Just for that. Okay. So, you know, it's a... 12, 13 day ferment on a lager and then we put them in the bright tank and we just leave them there. So, okay. you know, so we've got the 660s and the 680s in the brewery now and then next door in the old independent space, we've got um, 480 barrel brights and 260 barrel brights. I see. So, um, you so just make yeah. it work? 
three three of those, sometimes four of those are dedicated to lager. Okay. So And do you guys filter or fine? Fine. Fine. fine you yeah. fine everything. Yeah, yeah we fine, fine everything. So nothing's filtered. Okay. So. Is that just an equipment thing, like just another thing to buy, or you just finding just does the job? Uh, it's a combination for me. Like I've had this, we won't say it's an argument, but I've had this discussion with many a brewer over the year, and I just truly believe that centrifuging or filtering beer just destroys it. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of breweries out there. I won't name any examples sure. who used to make amazing beer, and since starting to centrifuge i believe their beer is significantly degraded what do you think the different the flavor difference is it's just oxygen pickup oh okay and just stripping yeah, you know you're beating, you're, you're beating the beating hell up, out yeah. of it while you while you're spinning it through that centrifuge and and again there's there's so many breweries out there that i've had this discussion with that are like no nah, you're wrong and i'm just like okay that's fine yeah like, yeah you know, this is my opinion and you know because i what i would say when i in my interviews and and more so maybe even just touring breweries i don't find many of them f- filter traditional filter <laughs> anymore it's either finding or yeah. centrifuge yeah. The, centrifuge that middle has sort of has sort of gone away yeah. um and i think most of them lately that i talked to you is is fining it's centrifuge is such an investment too that it's like a you're, it's sort of a next level thing right yeah I, I feel like if if you can't invest to get the best and have the brewery mm-hmm. that's really mm-hmm. set up to make that kind of transition like i don't know for a brewery our size it would make absolutely no sense to, yeah. to mm-hmm. filter or centrifuge. and in and all honesty like with a brewery of our size, it makes sense. We could turn the beer in four or five days quicker and our loss would be a lot less. Okay. But it, just from a product standpoint, like I, I just truly believe that, you know. Okay. I, I just think centrifuge is just destroy beer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. All right, let's talk about the volume, Evan. You mentioned that you brewed our beer, but it just so happened because you were on the first shift that day, right? Uh, Correct. But a typical day now at Original Pattern to be at the size you guys are at is, is that two shifts and four turns what is what does it look like yeah yeah so we got a a.m and a p.m right now okay and then a lead brewer kind of mid shift overseeing everything um and uh getting the beer transferred over to the packaging side okay taking care of it over there um but yeah two shifts uh two different brewers got it and where did you come from do you ha- have you brewed other, other places uh brewed a couple places in the central valley come from the central valley made my way to beer from wine okay uh got my degree from fresno state uh, in enology, uh, worked five harvests in wine industry. Okay, uh, had a couple stints in beer, trying to make my way in the, the valley, and then uh, I got see. an opportunity up here and uh, was uh, listening to y'all's podcast nice. in the, the lab and in the winemaking office. Okay, trying to, trying to stay connected to beer, and then when I got the opportunity from Andy, uh, just kind of jumped at it and moved up here. And okay. And he's a stickler, too. Uh, I was trying to go golfing with him for like a year. And um, he's like, I can't, you know, I don't, I don't have a brewer. And I'm exaggerating a little bit, but not much. Um, I was like, yeah, so hire a brewer, you know? And he's like, well, it's not that I'm not trying. Um, but it, it, he wasn't complaining like the rest of us business owners do. We're like, oh, there's nobody available. He was like... I have not found a person I want to make the, a brewer. Like, you're mm-hmm. a picky guy about what happens in your brewery. I am. I so am. so good on you, Evan. No, I've been, been lucky enough to have been accepted by Andy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Evan, Evan is a badass. Like, okay. there's, no, there's no other two, two things to say about him. And, you know, Chris, who unfortunately couldn't make it, is also that uh, Chris and Evan went to school together. Yeah, so we at, actually met at, at the, both in the wine, have wine degrees. Programs. Okay, nice. And I brought them both up from Fresno. So Got it. Yeah. yeah. Did you start in wine because you, you liked it more? You thought it would be more lucrative? Like, why did you start there instead of beer? Um, it was just what I was introduced to first, I would say. Okay. Um, uh, th- through wine. Uh, so, I actually started college as a graphic design major. All right. Uh, just briefly go through this. Um, uh, was shopping around for majors, almost close to graduation, joining the BFA. Had some friends that kind of failed on the other side of that um and made me nervous was shopping around uh wanted something more math and science based okay Uh, uh, something i could find value in the education instead of just trying to relying on what i had sure like like an art you know yeah um so uh ended up picking some grapes with one of my roommates uh 
pressed him that later that afternoon, went back the next day, and did some labs on him, and it's kind of like, is this what you guys do? Okay. Like, yeah. You know, maybe I, I took a couple of classes, uh, made sure I got through the Kim uh, portion of it first, and it was like, okay, I, if I can do the Kim, I can probably do the physical labor. Sure. Uh, so uh, started in that, and then um, made it on my way to fermentation class. Uh, with William Whalen, awesome professor at Fresno State. Um, at Fresno, at, at, yeah. at Fresno State, okay. um, uh, he uh, uh, made uh, made us make beer, I should say. And then uh, so because it was a lot quicker turn, you can do a lot more fermentations during the semester. Sure, yeah. And then just kind of like a couple of shots at wine. We made a, a red, a white, and a rosé, but we didn't see those products that's three months four you know four months like later semesters the, over yeah, yeah it's semesters over at the end you're doing your yeah. kind of final review and the, there's your wine that you made and all of it was gross but and the that beer was, was your test yeah yeah yeah. but all of it was gross and you know the, the beers that we all made we had some shots at and they came out good so okay I, I, and i just kept kept keeping up with that at home all right uh worked at a, a few, few other uh, harvests at other wineries a thousand case and then a hundred thousand case and then okay. all the way up to where we were crushing 300 million gallons of wine Wow, uh, and uh, uh, kind of again. Well, can like, I ask what winery that was? Uh, O'Neill. It's a big bulk winery. Okay. Um, there's some cool guys: Adam Pop, uh, Jeremiah Lloyd. That they'd be super stoked if I said their name on here. Nice. There you <laughs> go. All right. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, 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 so yeah, so um, big winery out there. Um, uh, who actually want to give a shout out is to uh, Shane Vetter at Tokmadera. It really took me under his wing. We made a lot of cool wines there. If you're ever okay. passing through uh, Central Valley on the 99, take an exit at 7, Avenue 7, and visit Toca Madera. Great wines. Toca Madera. Toca Madera. Okay. Great wines. All right. The, the Italian style. You got, you got the hills back there. Uh, own rooted vines. They don't even do that in California anymore. Everyone's worried about phylloxia. It's one of the few like own rooted vineyards. Super cool stuff. But, nice. Um, but yeah, yeah. So it worked a few harvests and wine. Do you think that is beer more labor? Like, like physical labor than wine is? Oh, uh, absolutely. It yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. winemakers might tell you different, but absolutely. Yeah. yeah it's like harvest year round. Because uh, harvest yeah. is tough. I, I, yeah, I imagine yeah. that's a tough time, but but that's once a year. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah. harvest every yeah. morning. At that, that big bulk winery, there was like six months out of the year was harvest, and that's the longest harvest they ever had. Okay. Um, but um, generally, it's like three months. Okay. And, and, that, you and need, then you coast the yeah, rest you, of the yeah, year? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, you get holidays, <laughs> you're eating Thanksgiving dinner, you know, you're eating dinner. You know, <laughs> you know, have a celebrate Christmas, you know, get the back there after New Year. With and Andy, then, uh, you're lucky you even leave the brewery. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, we're there every day. You know? <laughs> yeah, but, but, but not in a bad way. No, we're happy. Christmas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there is, there is. I'm not, I'm, I'm not that mean to people, I'm really not. But yeah. oh, sorry, sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> well, I'm I'm happy for my friend Andy that he has you because there's where there were some times there that I'm like, man, Andy, you got to leave this building. Yeah, he paid me uh, the nicest compliment. I think he uh, he called me anal. And okay, I, I, yeah. I, I, I take it as a compliment. You know? Andy, it's yeah. definitely yeah. a compliment. You're probably the most anal compliment. person you ever met, and yeah. uh, you know I really appreciated that and took that to heart. So. It yeah. makes good beer, right? Yeah. Like you got to pay attention to detail. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. Look, finding finding great stuff has not been easy. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> year year two, we did five thousand barrels, and I basically did that on my own. Okay, right. Um, I had someone part time, and year three we did ten thousand. Year four we were maxed out at ten thousand. And um, was it the goal when you got hired, uh, or was it sort of just a byproduct of making great beer? And you and you, um, you and, and Max said that ah, let's just keep a going for it. Combination, I guess. You know, like when I first started there, we had four twenty barrel tanks, and we literally. We we outgrew them like with the first two batches that I made. Okay, it was like wow. we can't we can't keep going like this. So <clears throat> we put in two eighties and eighty barrel bright and a forty. Um, and then two months later, we couldn't keep the beer on the shelf, so we outgrew that. And we put in another another five eighties. Did anything? Um, else, I don't know how to ask this and get a real answer out of you, but I'm going to try. Okay. Did anything change other than? The brewer, you. In other words, hired a brewer like you, you, I'm sure you immediately went in and changed the beers that were coming out of there. Yep. Was there also like a sales team change too? Or was it really beer driven that made that growth happen immediately? So when I started there, it was literally, I Max hired me, the owner Max Silverstein hired me and, and I was still working at Wildcard at the time, yeah, so I was okay. working. I was dry, I was commuting to Reading to help out Jenny and Jeff, and 
I was doing four days up there, four 12-hour days up there, and then I'd come back and work at Original Pattern on the weekends. Okay. So when I first started, it was max part-time. He was still in his CFO job in the tech industry Mm -hmm. and two bartenders. And I literally walked in on my first day and Max just goes, here's a brewery figure it out <laughs> okay. no, no, i'm not joking wow. it's like here's that a brewery like it's yeah. yours <laughs> right just figure it out okay <laughs> so you know as i said so it was myself max and two bartenders yeah and i think what that was we, the whole company or so the whole company okay. and what are we at now virginia i think we're at oh. 36 30 oh, I, thought we were, I thought we hit 40 oh it, we've wow. hit 40 yeah. so we've got yeah. 40 employees now you know but i guess what i'm asking that first of all that is a good answer thank you that's what i was looking for but how did the word get out? Because, like, I know you make good beer, but I had to go find it, right? So yep. I, you're saying that, like, you sold these tanks almost immediately. I'm just sort of asking how. Did you have a name for yourself already? Like, who told the world you make great beer? Yeah, no, not really. It was, um, I'll be honest, it was tough the first couple of years. Okay. Um, it, it was tough, but, you know, look. I think the January after I started in the in year one, uh, I think we brought on Virginia. So Virginia has been there since nearly the start. Okay, yeah. Um, we had an amazing sales manager at the time too, Tim, who's now at, at Altamont Beer Works. Okay, yeah. Um, you know, between him him and Virginia, they really built the core of, of this company. And, Got it, And okay. Virginia and Jenny, who are now co-head of sales, they've really just – brought on an amazing team everyone's just so stoked to be there everyone's just so enthusiastic you know it's like it's an amazing place to work it's got such a great culture we just we we all have a common goal and that's just and that's just not from the brewing side it's just from sales from the tasting room everything it's just like we just want to make the best product we possibly can and get it out there and just enjoy what we're doing so okay yeah. And is it, Virginia, is it, I mean, I see you guys in chains now, too, um, for for non-industry listeners. You know, I'm talking about Safeway and stuff like that. Is that... Not in Safeway, yeah. It's, no, you're not? Okay. No, no, no. Um, you're in my local uh, Lunardi's, which I yeah. love. It's yeah. a great store with a great beer selection. You guys are always there. I landed um, that account. You did? Um, I landed it two weeks into the shutdown. Okay. Um, nice. During the pandemic, okay. during the pandemic, and yeah. I, um, yeah, I mean, getting getting shelf space when the world shut down, it yeah. was all we immediately just went right over to cans and uh, like everyone, and yeah. and that was my job was finding places for all this all the cans. Okay, and so would you say? Um, I mean, you don't got to give me all the numbers, but, you know, do, do, do big accounts like chains, is that something like half of your can sales or, or are you still really just so many small places like mine that are really doing it? Um, it's a combination okay. for sure. Yeah. And I, you know, every single account means a whole lot to us. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I just have to scoot back and talk about the growth because yeah. when, um, when I got hired on that January, um, I, anything I sold, I had to deliver in the back of my car. (laughs) And um, so getting to be a part of the growth of such an amazing spot um, has just been the thrill of a lifetime for me. Yeah, I bet. Because, I mean, any kind of, well, and like when you're saying there's a cool team and a good culture, anytime you you feel that success as a team, as a family, right? So it it feels, it's kind of a bigger win than whatever corporate job you might have had in your life. I don't know what, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I I could never do corporate. Yeah. (laughs) I I was a social worker and a stay-at-home mom and and now this, so. um, Working with a bunch of brewers, by the way, you're still a social worker, (laughs) just just so you know. (laughs) (laughs) Especially working with Andy. You're definitely still a social worker. Yeah. <laughs> He's so great. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, and, and just to speak about culture really quickly, I really, really focus when I hire people on culture. Um, I want people who, first of all, I always hire for enthusiasm. If people are excited about the opportunity of getting to work for us, they're excited about our brand in particular, that's a really good leg up. Um and you know our sales team we doubled our sales team last year okay and um, my guy drew is on your sales team (laughs) yes he is Is are we gonna call him in i we we i do want to call him in uh he so he worked here at the hop grenade (laughs) right Uh, i met him when he worked at sierra nevada 
I don't like telling him this, but he's one of my favorite humans. <laughs> Um, but well, I, that's what Andy told I, me when when he applied for the job. Andy pulled me aside and said, "Hire this one." Seriously. So, seriously. so I met Drew. My my beautiful wife out there bought me a, a personal tour of Sierra Nevada. Okay, for yeah. my thirty thirty third birthday or something like that. Um, and Drew was my tour guide. Drew, Drew's, Drew's entering the building now. I think. Yeah, come on Drew in. Comes. Get, come in here, Drew. <laughs> You're going to have to stay on the couch um, for a second, but come in here. So uh, so I've known Drew for a long time, albeit not that well. But you know, when, <laughs> yeah, yeah. when they were hiring for this job and Drew was working the tasting room, I, I was his biggest advocate. I was like, you need to hire this guy. This guy's hungry. He wants this. Oh, totally. Um, and he's killing it. The, the, so, h- the hardest part about having Drew here is we didn't have room for, we didn't have anywhere for him to go. And it was painfully obvious that he wants to do something more in beer, right? Yeah. And But he was so damn good as a server and a bartender that I just was like, I'm going to keep him as long as I can anyway. I'm just going <laughs> to keep him as long as I can. And and it was the pandemic time, so breweries didn't know what the hell they were doing, right? So we had him during, during the, the weird times. Um, and then uh, he was just fantastic. We didn't like to tell him that. Um, but it was like... It got to the point where it was almost a crime for him to stay at a job like this, being a bartender, right? Yep. As probably you felt oh, when yeah. he was a bartender for you. You guys yeah. probably saw pretty quickly, like, the guy just likes beer so much that, I don't know, Drew, I feel like you could sell almost anything, but you're particularly good at selling beer. This is, I promise this is the last time I ever compliment you. <laughs> I do love beer so much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the kind words, Justin. Um, you're a you're a, you have your own territory of sales at Original Pattern. I'm just straight up Oakland Alameda. Just Oakland Alameda, okay. If you know anyone that owns a restaurant, <laughs> <laughs> Drew at Original Pattern. <laughs> Drew at Original Pattern Beer dot com. <laughs> there you go. Got you. Yeah. Um, All right, how are Virginia? How how's his sales numbers? Is he good? Amazing. Drew's yeah. amazing. Is he good? Okay, uh, I can see that. Yeah. Right. Like he just has that personality. I mean, really, you're like the combination of everything that we look for in a salesperson. Mm-hmm. Super easy to get along with. Funny. Um, you know, I, he's someone I look forward to seeing mm-hmm. and talking to, and and that that translates to relationships. Totally. And um, he's and a great dresser. He has he has impeccable style. <laughs> he knows more about beer than I do, for sure. Hands so. down, like the most impeccable style on the entire payroll. <laughs> 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 I don't think I've been at an event where Drew hasn't offered me one of his piece of jewelry to wear for the rest of the night. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you see, giving uh, you jewelry uh, right now. It happens every amazing. time. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think everything just sends it home, like. I've had a great experience at Original Pattern. I remember uh, being in the tasting room one time and like really gassing up Andy's beer. Like mm-hmm. there's a West Coast IPA on tap, and I was like, "Dude, this is better than Ghost Towns. This is better than Factions." Like, wow. like West Coast IPA. Here he goes. Andy pulled me aside. He's like, "Hey, man, like, he's like, he's like dude, like, he's like, I, I appreciate you love the beer, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's like." Don't say that shit. Tone it down. <laughs> yeah, tone it down a little bit. He's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, I just like to say, like, we try very hard, like in every like aspect, we try to make the cleanest beer, like that we can do. Yeah. Like, um, mm-hmm. I hear you. You guys are a very competitive sales team. I think it was Max I was talking to you that you oh, guys yeah. are like on a minute to minute basis checking everyone else's numbers and trying to be top dog over there. Drew Drew, Drew told me on Saturday he's like I beat Lewis by eleven dollars. <laughs> I beat Jeremy by. Sorry, $11. Jeremy, you beat Jeremy by eleven. <laughs> Shout out Jeremy, he's in the. the <laughs> Oh, here, I forgot to put the camera on you. The, I know. I the was... fans want to know who Drew is. Yeah. This is handsome it's Drew. Drew. That's, what we, that's what we call him when he's not looking. <laughs> uh, no, nah, it is very competitive, and it's fun. Like, I mean, like, I love beer, like, to the, the core of, like, my existence, and I just, like, feel so grateful to have this great opportunity yeah. working for Original Pattern and, like, working for you and, like, Kevin and... 
Well, thank working, you. Working for Sierra Nevada before that, like, right? It, it's just been an uh, incredible ride. So. Well, we're happy for you, Drew, uh, here at the Hop Grenade. We we knew that we that you were a short timer. You had bigger things on your horizon. But I will say this: I'm also glad you found a company like Original Pattern and didn't just stay on at, at Sierra Nevada. I know that there were a lot of factors involved there, but I just think that you're. Um, I don't know. At this point in your life. This is the right brewery for you. You're a small brewer type of person, not a corporate brewery type of person. Does that make sense? I think you would have thrived at Sierra. Don't get me wrong. I just think this is a better fit for you. That's yeah. all. And like a, a, a quick little backstory. I'll keep it short. Um, when I was a tour guide at Sierra Nevada, hmm. Andy was at Wild Card. Yeah. Red in California. Right. You know? So him and Emily came and took a tour. Uh, they had all these sorts of like different tours at Sierra Nevada, like, the entry level, like the beer geek tour and stuff. It was a uh, like there's this one upper echelon tour level. The extra tour, yeah, the, yeah, the VIP. Yeah, you got you to email someone. Emily okay. emailed like the higher echelon. Nice. And uh, Andy and Emily came through and gave me a bunch of koozies and t-shirts and hats and stuff like that. And yeah, like I mean, that's the first time I met Andy. That's how you got to know Andy then. Okay, yeah, yeah. and then you know. Two years apart. Did you just apply randomly? Like you just remembered when you saw his application? Oh, that's the guy from Sierra Nevada? Uh, so I used to see, Drew used to come, when he was still working at the Torpedo Room, yeah, when yeah. it was still a thing, he used to, he was managing it. Um, he used to just come in and drink beer and I'd be like, I swear that's Drew. Okay, yeah. And then one day we just got to talking and it turns out it was him and yeah. then we hired him for the tasting room and then... He told me how hungry he was for sales, and it was like, "All right." I said to Virginia and Jenny, I was like, "Jenny, our other co-sales director, I was like, you guys have got to hire this guy.'" <laughs> yeah, and I, I think I was right. Oh, so. absolutely! <laughs> yeah. And the friendly competition is huge. I mean, I love that. We are a really, really high-performing, driven sales team, um, and extremely competitive. Mm-hmm. But that's healthy. The amount of um, I mean, the warmth that everyone feels for each other, the support we give each other, you know, there's texts going going around, you know, numerous times a day, asking questions, clarifying, throwing, you know, throwing leads to each other. Um, we have each other's back. Yeah. And uh, the culture within the sales team was something that I worked really, really, Jenny and I both worked really hard to develop this year. And um, we're seeing it pay off. Love it. Yeah. All right, Drew, get out of my studio. Yep. All right. I got one last note right now. I yep. want to do a big shout out to Justin Crosley. Like, <laughs> Thanks, brother. <laughs> owner of the Hop Grenade. Appreciate the that. The session. And uh, shout out to Scary Gary in the studio, too. You guys can't see him, but he's over there doing the admin. Yeah. Our, our back of house manager, Andrew Scary Gary, Scary a.k.a. Gary. Thunderdome. Shout out to Andy. Shout out to Evan. <laughs> hey, thanks for showing up for my 10-year anniversary party, too. That was good to see you, Drew. Yeah, it was good to see you guys, too. All right, guys. Later. Get out. Get Thank out. you, brother. Get out <laughs> All right, before we take a break, let's talk about the pale ale that's in our glass, too. Yes. Andy, what's this beer? Uh, so this one is called How's the Serenity. I think I mentioned before it's, uh, it's, it's from one of my favorite Australian movies, which you all should see, The Castle. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so it's, uh, we, look, I'll be honest, most of our beers are never exactly the same. You know, we... Do you uh, mean even when you brew them again? When we brew yeah. them again. Okay. So I have this, like, photographic memory of what a beer tasted like, and basically this is what I tell my sales team every day, that beer, I want the beer to evolve every time. Like, okay. I want it to be better. So we're constantly, every day, we're just trying, what can we do to make this better? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think this is maybe the third or fourth round of this one. And as I said, it gets slightly tweaked every time, not to the common drinker out there. No one's going to notice it, but right. I, I notice it and, and my brew team definitely notice it. So, so this has got three of my favorite hops in it. Mosaic, obviously, mm-hmm. um, Enigma, which is a very polarizing hop for a lot of people, but it is literally one of the, I think one of the best hops on the market, Australian Enigma. Okay. And the latest Australian edition, which is Eclipse, um, which 
I get a lot of people, a lot of brewers reaching out to me about feedback of it because they see how much of it we use. Um, Describe it to me. What, what do you think defines Eclipse? It is very unique. It is super, super citrusy. Okay. Um, very almost like Mandarin, like rind. Oh, right. Um, okay. So a little bitterness there. A little bitterness. Yeah. You've got to use it sparingly. Um, the first time we used it, we went all in on it, and we went about 80% Eclipse in a pale ale, and it was like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think we overdid it. Okay. So, um, so yeah, we, we're back down at around 25%. So this is about 50% Mosaic, 25% Enigma, 25% Eclipse. So, okay. Yeah. And how would you define Enigma, too? I agree with you, by the way, that it's polarizing. So... I was talking about this with my new brewer, Shay, the other day um, and and my lead brewer, Chris, and and they were like, describe Enigma to me. And I said, it's Enigma. It's an Enigma. <laughs> no, it's it's Enigma. Yeah. I don't... It. You ask me about any hop, I can give you flavors. Okay. Enigma is... It just tastes like Enigma. Interesting. It is just the most unique flavor, aroma, taste. It's just... Okay. Could you do a, like a single hop beer with, with Enigma, or is it too weird? Uh, I think I'd like it. Okay. I think um, I don't think a lot of others would. Interesting. So it is just the most intense hop. Like wh- who was the who was the collab we did with recently that had oh the Rip collab with yes, that with yeah, Danny it, from yeah, Rip it just overshadowed a little. It's like literally twenty, yeah. maybe twenty yeah. percent Enigma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, 20, not even a full box yeah. in the whole oh. dry hop. Twenty percent Enigma and, in a in a 300 pound dry yeah. hop and it took over and yeah. it was just boom wow like, yeah. it is just so intense. to me it kind of reminds me of like what strata does mm-hmm. it kind of just gives you that generic hop flavor okay uh, you, you know like like because strata's makes, strata's another one that people love yeah, or hate too yeah, yeah exactly and, yeah. and it's it's in the same ballpark for me um enigma is okay. more like red berry uh, to me okay it, it has like kind of more of a, of a pleasant character than i would say strata does like strata like when i ever have a beer with strata in it it tastes like you know new school like i know i absolutely know this is a new school hop but like you know i'm like what is this what is this what is this and yeah you, and you get to the board and you're like oh oh it's strata yeah okay yeah got it yeah, it's, 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 yeah okay but i definitely get the citrus in the, this is a great pale yeah, ale. Oh, yeah yeah definitely citrus. i also get pine I don't, oh yeah is that i don't know if which, which hop that's from but it's definitely piney yeah i the, feel like the pine yeah. the the pineiness definitely comes from the enigma as yeah, well yeah it's very okay. piney and resin resin, yeah. just straight yeah. resin. But I, 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 like almost like a bat tar. Like. Yeah. So yeah. if you guys looked on the flavor map, it's like a splat. It's like going the whole the thing. Direction. I don't know. They try and give you direction of what yeah. it is, and I just don't really agree with any of it. It's yeah, just like, yeah. I, 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 I don't really, like, it's like Evan said, you know, you get a little bit of, like, kind of red currant, red berry from it, but yeah, it's like, like w- whatever else it tastes yeah, like, yeah. I don't really know. I just like, yeah, it, I just know I like the taste. Yeah, no, you know what, you know it's hop flavor. You know, it, 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 oh, it, yeah. It, you know, like, it's like, kind of like, like I said, like, you, just, you know it's hop, you know, you know it's Australian hop, you're like, what is, what is this? Sure. I, 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 I feel like, like. But nothing to then just put your finger exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah, and, yeah, and, no. and then you see it on the board and you're like, oh, yeah, okay. You're like, that's it, what I taste. It, yeah, it's enigma. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool. Okay. I like your I like your relation to strata too. That makes sense to me. I th- feel like. Well, I do you guys feel like three is a magic number? I noticed on mm. like a lot of your. It years. really it really depends for me. Three three plus maybe like not three. to rely too heavily on one thing. Uh, it really depends. A lot of our pails are only two. Okay. Um, most of our West Coasts are three to four, but we do have a lot of two. Like we're brewing a. a we're brewing uh, West Coast tomorrow, Zero Distortion, which is super Simcoe heavy and a little bit of New Zealand Materi. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it just varies. It's just what I feel like on the day, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. I do. When you open the fridge, gives yeah. you more options. What do you have a lot of? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah no, sometimes, yeah. I do feel um, like yeah. we keep it simpler than other breweries with our We do, hop we do. And and one thing with our beer as well is that there's usually always a focal hop. Mm-hmm. So whatever Absolutely. the first hop listed on our can is, okay. is the dominant hop. Yeah. That's in, a good pro tip right yeah. here. It, no, and it's, it, okay. it's always, we don't do a lot of like even splits or, you know, two pounds of this, four pounds of that, whatever. It's like generally... You know, there's at least fifty percent of the whirlpool is the first hop. Okay. Generally, yeah, not yeah. always. So. All right. Yeah. This is a good pro tip. Yeah. I, I read a lot of your cans, so now I know. Yeah. I can tell people. <laughs> 
All right, let's do this. Let's take another uh, quick break because we're going to run out of time, but we've got more beer to try. Okay. And we've got a little bit more to talk about, too. All right. So you're listening to Original Pattern on the session. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the session. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. And we are still with Original Pattern in my studio having fun. Thank you guys again for being here. No, thank you. And like you said, like we've said, it's it's been a long time coming. It's it been a while. Been, Honestly, I, d- I had forgotten that I didn't. I thought I had you on as Original <laughs> Pattern years ago, too. No, but I just realized no. now that's, no. that's amazing. So it's good to finally have you in here. Get to talk about the ge- beer. Get to drink the beer. Um, you brought out a good crew. So shout out to all the Original Pattern people who came out to the Hop Grenade for, uh, for support. Indeed. It's very nice. My everybody. whole packaging team's out there. Amazing. Uh, my packaging manager. So after after we Deal won, Master Dennis. That's right. Nice. Deal so, Master. <laughs> so after we won gold at, at GABF a couple of years ago, which we honestly thought we'd never do, was win a gold medal at GABF. Okay. Um, we labelled Dennis the Do Master because he he puts the beer in the can, and I think at that low stage, dissolved oxygen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, th- I think at that stage with GABF, it's got a little better better now. But I think it was like nine to ten or eleven weeks before they judge the beer okay um wow so yeah so, so it had to so that it was really important that it was low do oh yeah yeah DO so, competition basically that's that right. for hoppy that is, hoppy yeah. categories so, so they've got a little better about it these days but yeah dennis is definitely the do master well i got to see your canning line the other day when we went for our collaboration brew meetup yes um so you guys have expanded that i remember yes. when it the the canning line unfolded into the brewery hall hallway oh, yeah. and had to be done right there yeah you folded up and moved it into another building now well <laughs> it, yes but we, we actually got to the point where it became too inconvenient to move and level every time I so understood. we just it just constantly lived in front of 280 barrel uni tanks mm-hmm. and we would literally just dry hop with like seven yeah. to nine boxes of hops over the top of this thing on a tiny little like stock picking lift okay yeah. Filtering, um, filtering, running hoses under uh, under the canning line. Yeah. Oh, try, no. try, trying to feed those in. Wild. They didn't show you that shit when you accepted the job, did they? Evan? Yeah, yeah, they, they, that they, was they like day seven. Take one, take no. one. Nothing in front of it. You know. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. Yeah. I think our maddest day was we were packaging eighty barrels, brewing sixty barrels, and I was filling bourbon barrels, and there literally wasn't a square foot of space anywhere. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, fun, fun I saw times. now. You guys, I mean, you're still. You guys are still. I don't even think the word is crammed in there. You're still pieced in there perfectly. Yeah. Uh, but you do have more space. That I was kind of happy to see that 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 bo- that canning line moving and working, and oh, it's yeah. very different scene. Than, it's been a game changer having yeah. having next door and the process piping to the other door, the other side, and nice just freeing up a little bit of space for the brewers not to go mad. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, so speaking of games changing, I have to I have to ask you. I have to you need to address something for me. Yes. Um I figured this was coming. Well, you're one of my favorite brewers, you know, <laughs> and um but not just that, you're you know, you're you're possibly even more popular than you know you are, so people talk. Yes. And there are rumors that your position might be evolving or changing or I don't know what at original pattern. My fear is that I won't get to hang out with you anymore. Can you describe to me what might be changing at Original Pattern, or do you not want to talk about it? Uh, no, that's fine. We can talk okay. about it. Yeah. Um, I, th- I think it's pretty out there now. At least most of the commercial breweries know, and I'm sure most of our accounts know by now, too. Um, my wife, my beautiful wife who's sitting out there, is such a badass. Emily is a wonderful human. I think she's been promoted six times in <laughs> six years at Adobe. Okay, wow. Um, yeah. And they basically have asked her to come and take over a new role, a strategic role um, in, a, in for the whole of Australasia. Wow. Um, coincidentally, coincidentally, in Australia? In my home, te- home <laughs> city of Melbourne. That's crazy. Um, so it wasn't an easy decision. We thought about it a lot, but uh, I am moving back to Australia. But, okay. Um, 
you know, Chris, my lead brewer, is going to take over as head brewer and, um, you know, Max and Virginia and Jenny and everyone, Mm -hmm. you know, we kind of made the decision as a group that that I am going to stay on. I'm going to stay on as the director of brewing. Okay. As you Uh, are now, the director of brewing? Yeah. uh, At the moment, I'm a a bit of everything at the moment. I'm head brewer, maintenance manager, production manager. Exterminator. Exterminator. (laughs) So this is a a promotion. Uh, uh, Yes, it is a promotion. So, um, so yeah, so I'll be stepping back from the day to day, but at the same time, I'll still be doing a lot of the scheduling. I'll be on call. To, you know, I'm sure I'll be getting a lot of calls at two in the morning Australia time. Right. Um, so you're you know, uh, uh, you're still full time then director of brewing operations at Original Power. Yeah, and I'll be coming over. I'll be over here for basically 25 percent of the year. Okay. Um, so three to four weeks a quarter. Mm-hmm. Coming over to do the big things like hop selection, all that sort of stuff, you know, yeah, um, yeah. barrel beers, all of that, and just as general support for these guys. And sure. Um, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm a little sad that you'll be here less, but let's be honest, I barely see you anyway. You're so busy. Yeah, I might see you more. Yeah, you, you may. <laughs> you probably will, to be honest. Yeah, you because know, you're you're still got to come back, obviously. Yeah. And you're gonna want to see your friends when you come back, or maybe oh, I'll indeed. just go see you there. Indeed. I mean, come on. Indeed. You, you can know, take me golfing in Melbourne. And I I just have so much faith in these in in Evan and Chris to run this brewery. You know, Chris has brewed. Honestly, Chris has been there for I think he's coming up on three years pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I think we're on about batch 2200 at the moment, mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure Chris has brewed like 75% of those batches of beer okay. between, yeah. between him and Evan. And so, yeah. you know, we got full faith, everything's going to remain exactly as it is. People, you know, as I said before, like we just strive every day, just what can we do to make things better? Right. You know, and with yeah. that attitude, and when, when you have such great people with that attitude, it's like, you know, we're going to. We're going to make this work, and and it, it's going to be great. Yeah. So, I think you're going to handle. I think you're the right person to do this. I think you're going to handle this perfectly well. I only have one worry for you, and it's and you guys know this too. How are you going to taste the beer enough? And I know you're going to plan something, which I'd like to know the plans. But by enough, <laughs> I mean I know you're tasting the beer every single day right now. Yes, because yes, it's how you are. You're just yeah. like I got to know the like what's happening. That was part of my contract negotiation with Max <laughs> that they're going to ship very expensive beer. Very it has to happen, right? To Australia, yes. Yeah. So, and it's got to ship know, cold. And that's it's gotta, right. Like, that's exactly right. Because you don't want to be so. calling them about problems that don't really exist over here, yeah, right? That, <laughs> <laughs> like, like Evan's going to be like, bro, the beer's fine. We kept yeah. it cold. Yeah. Uh, um, but that is going to be a unique challenge, I think. It will. Right? Yeah, it will. Yeah. But yeah, look, as I say, I have I have full faith in these guys. Sure. These guys are so badass at what they do, yeah. and it's not going to be full remote. This guy will be back. That's right. Yeah. You know, we've joked about getting like a little uh, like Mars rover. Yeah, and just sticking like <laughs> a you know they can go over hoses and stuff on the ground, and we'll just stick an iPad on there, and I'll just log in every day. And you can and actually just, drive it around. That's right. I'll <laughs> just drive it around. So, <laughs> oh my God, yeah. Andy's. Um, Literally always here. Still, that's right. He's, he's, he's there when I close my eyes. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's, 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 he, I, you know, yeah. I can't. I can't do something at work without hearing him yell at me. So I think it's going to work out. All right. <laughs> totally. Is we've it, we've is, really original pattern is one of those companies that's super different. We do things differently than most breweries, and and I think that's part of our success is that we have been able to pivot. Every time we get a curveball thrown at us, we pivot. We think about it. We do something that normally we wouldn't do. Um, you know, we are not losing Andy. We're, we literally just promoted him, and he's going to firmly be at the helm still. Right. Is it the helm? I love it. Of a yeah, ship? The or, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think the helm. Yeah. I think that sounds good. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Um, but we're, we are very different in that when we, when we find someone of value, we work really hard to keep them. Okay. And yeah. um, and that's exactly what we did with Andy. There's no way we're gonna lose you. <laughs> no. No well, way. The, I'm glad I got the the, the proper explanation because I was a little worried. I love the beer so much, and as you said, your team is great. Um, um, so uh, you know, I, I still was confident the beer was going to be fine. But I'm more confident, and just I just feel comfortable knowing that you're still at the helm. So that's wonderful. Um, on top of all that. 
congratulations to you yeah, and Emily. You. I think that if, uh, what a great thing Absolutely. that she has done. Uh, what a strange coincidence that it's back in your hometown. I know. Uh, and I just I wish you both like all that success oh, too, just on, on her side of the career path too, right? So thank that's, you. It's 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 going to be a big change, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are yeah. you excited to to, to kind of live among your 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 bros again, though? Your I friends, am. I guess I your mates. Am I I'm supposed yeah, to? Yeah, my yeah. mates. There yeah. we go. Yeah, my mates. Yeah. Um, no, I am. I'm, I'm super excited, you know, like my, my dad's in his early eighties now, okay. so it'll be good to go and spend some more time with him and, Absolutely. you know, still be coming over, you know, once a quarter and being here for a month or so and being involved, you know, this, this brewery means everything to me. You yeah, know, I've, I can I've tell. built this place with my own two hands and with a lot of help of other people, you know, with yep. Virginia, Evan, Max, everyone, you know, it's sure. It's um, it means the world to me. Well, then, know? what a great opportunity! I mean, you you might you just kind of literally get a, a get best of both worlds. Yeah, you get a little hometown action. I think you're going to miss uh, uh, us out here in the Bay, but I think you're going to yeah get to enjoy your friends and family again for a while. It's the best of both worlds, man. That's right. What and a blessing! Then, you know, nothing's forever. Yeah. You know, for all we know, I'd give it another year. Emily will get promoted again, and we'll be back. So <laughs> you know. it does sound like she's the overachiever oh, in yeah, the family. She is. Yeah, she uh, <laughs> yeah she pays the bills. That's for sure. So. All right. Well, because we don't have a ton of time left, let's talk about the couple of beers that are in our glass. I want to make sure that we do that. Um, And the first one's a a collaboration that you did, I think, with Fort George. Yes. Where are they out of? Uh, Out of Astoria. Oh, yeah. Yeah, up in Oregon. We started to get their beer down here, too, here at the the Hop Grenade uh, recently. So they must have gotten a distro or something. Yeah, yeah. They're a a great brewery. Mike, the head brewer there, is just one of the most wonderful people you'll you'll ever meet. Um, Yes. Matt, who runs his R and D department, is one of the just literally one of the most lovely people we've ever met. Mate, and um, it was just such a strange thing. Like we were literally just at, at this is the second collab we've done with them. Um, the first one was called Tropics Tropics of the Dank. This one's called Nectar of the Dank. Nice. Okay. Um, and I was literally sitting at the brewery one day, maybe eighteen months ago, and the whole crew just walked in out of nowhere and asked if I was around and got talking to them and and I was like how did you guys even hear about us you know and he's like we've just heard so many great things about this brewery and and now we're just we're super close mates you know it's just they're just such wonderful people the whole organization up there is is just great so so tell us about the beer it's uh, very, it's dry and dank. Uh, it's dry and dank. <laughs> I mean, extremely, yeah. extremely you could have just called danky. it dry and dank. Dry it's, and dank. So, it's fantastic. Um, so yeah, it's 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 Simcoe heavy, Simcoe uh, cryo, Simcoe T ninety in the whirlpool. Okay. Um, Evan, correct me if I'm wrong. Little nectar on in the whirlpool, or is it five eight six in the whirlpool? Uh, I got you right here, buddy. He's looking it up on the on the sheet. Uh, By the way, uh, while yeah, he's looking, yeah, no, half a bag of Nectron per turn, yeah. and Nectron yeah. too, okay. Nectron and uh, and HBC five eight six, everyone's favorite hop at the moment. So. Love it. It's yeah. in our it's in our faction collab, of course. They're okay. kind of the kings of five eight six right Roger, now. Roger oh, loves yeah. his five eight six. So he did a pale lager for us yeah. that's got some five eight six. He's in international there. version of yeah. five eight six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's nice. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> I love this beer. This is a really good IPA. Yeah. Yeah. It came out really good. We're really stoked on it. We um we sent some up to Fort George to try and. It just so happened the day we arrived, Mike, the head brewer, was going out on vacation for 10 days. And I was like, you better make sure this gets stashed somewhere. Yeah. And then I texted him the next day. I'm like, hey, it's arrived. Yeah. He's like, it's gone already. No, he's (laughs) like, I've already got people texting me. I want this beer. Oh, yeah. And I don't know whether, well, we obviously don't have the label here, but the label is just gorgeous. Okay. Um, Nice. It is such a beautiful label. It's hummingbirds. Oh, cool. It's just gorgeous. So, yeah. You like this one, Teresa? I really do. It's a good IPA. Yeah, I love that. Honestly, Nectaron is really one of my favorite hops mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. It's like a little melon. It's not just yeah. dank. I'm getting kind of like I, stone fruit peaches. melon. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I overwrite peaches is what I get for sure yeah. from, from Nectaron. Uh, we've been using a lot, in, uh, especially in the collabs and... Like, like, just like rot peaches in the best way, you know. Yep. Like, uh, if you've if, if watched holes, you know, sploosh, you know, make sure what I imagine sploosh is, you know. <laughs> One of our beer, uh, Wondrous at Firestone Walker Invitational when we were drunk, 
we had decided to call our anniversary beer from them Sploosh. <laughs> <laughs> when we sobered up the following week and, and I followed up with that beer, he's like, yeah, we're not calling it Sploosh. <laughs> we just can't do it. Um, you know, you mentioned dry and dank, and I just want to say really quickly, a large amount, a large majority of our beer finishes dry mm-hmm. and yeah. um, it makes it beautiful beer to pair with food because of that it makes it easy to have a second one yeah um, I agree with that, that that dry finish is just really key I think I think you're right and it is across the board like so it, it's part of why your lagers are so good as well um, oh, let's talk lagers so yeah I mean it's really it's definitely I, I think part of your your signature yeah and why I like them too you know I got off of IPAs for years uh, I think I've, I've told you this it wasn't until 2020 when I came back to work here at the Hop Grenade myself, you know, just slinging cans out the door the best we could, that I got back into hops. And the only reason I got back into hops, I've said this on the show so many times, is um, Altamont, Ghost Town, and Original Pattern. Like, it was your IPAs with that dryness. I can drink another one. Mm -hmm. They were interesting again. It wasn't just like an IBU thing. Mm -hmm. Um, It really really kind of helped change my palate again. And I'm thankful, because now I'm back to like... Loggers and IPAs, loggers and IPAs, you know. So I, I do think you're right. It's a signature that kind of brought me back to the style. Yep. So, yeah. All right, and we got one more to try, too. We do. What's this one? So this is Bean Me Up, our smoked coffee porter. So okay. this is the first beer I ever brewed in brewery school. Oh, really? So our, our, my, like, like your recipe? My recipe, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the, so the program I did was, you know, a lot of the programs over here are very lab-focused, and it's not that my program wasn't lab focused, but we actually got to brew twelve out of our own beers during during school. Okay, yeah. Um, so this is the very first beer I ever brewed at uh, brewery school. Now it's definitely been tweaked a little since then. Okay, um, but it's basically the same the same beer as as what we brewed. And this is fantastic. Oh, it's just gorgeous. It really is. As soon as you put the word smoke in a beer, I start to flinch a little bit. Not my favorite thing. But this, I'm going to say a thing that only, and I I don't smoke anymore, but only smokers will understand. This is like the first cigarette of the day. (laughs) (laughs) uh, That's how good this beer is. uh, When I dumped this beer, I call it my dad's coffee farts. (laughs) It it smells like when he drove me to school smoking a cigarette and farting coffee. (laughs) (laughs) Which to him was wonderful. I just gave you a... It doesn't sound like it, but this is a compliment. This is... uh, (laughs) Back in the day, this was... This is the first cigarette of the day. Which means... um, What I'm saying is it's really not overly smoky at all. No. It has all of these other characteristics, including tobacco. I'm kind of getting a little bit of um that just make it super delicate and yeah. wonderful um it's funny you'd say about the smoke actually we just uh the, this particular batch we haven't brewed this beer we've been struggling to keep up so much with production it's just so hectic the whole time just sure. trying to trying to stay afloat i guess and keep you know keep beer on on the shelf for sales to sell and that sort of thing so we haven't brewed this beer in probably almost a year okay and I was like, ah, oh, it's been long enough. I've never tweaked this beer. I was talking before about how we've tweaked beer. We tweak beers, and I've never tweaked this beer. I've always been so happy about it, and it's been so long. I was just like, you know what? I'm going to tweak this a little. So we added a little more smoke to you it did? this okay. time. Yeah. Just, a, just a tiny bit, maybe another one and a half percent. So okay. And that's a malt, right? It's just a smoked, smoked malt. malt. Yeah. 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 So German, like, beechwood smoked malt. So. Okay. So it's more of like a smoked base malt that you're adding to a porter recipe? Is it uh, a so y- or is it a caramel malt that's smoked? Uh, no, it's just like best malts, um, yeah. beechwood smoked malt. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. That might be yeah. why I, it's not offensive to me, too, because it's not peat. Yeah. I don't like the peat smoke no, stuff the peat, at the all. Peat, the peat's a lot. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, there's really a nice. there's you, a lot. You pick really up the nice. smoke, right? Teresa? Oh yeah, yeah, you got yeah, it for yeah. sure. And but I mean that sometimes coffee can give you that phenolic mm-hmm. character. It's like it's mm-hmm. it's not mm-hmm. super smoky, just like a little phenolic. Yeah, yeah. Which is yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, yeah. It's got a it's it's one thing I was taught at school is to never over overcomplicate a recipe, mm-hmm. and this is by far the most complicated oh, yeah. recipe we make. Okay, it's got a lot of different grain in it. Does so, it really? Yeah, it does. How many different grains? Uh, Evan can tell Let's you. He's, out, yeah. he's got it right in front of him, right there. So, can you list them off, Evan? Our uh, listeners yeah, yeah, will yeah, love yeah, it. Numbers. Um, so, can I list numbers? Is that okay? Uh, yeah, you can list whatever right, you uh, like. Eight, yeah. Eighteen bags, Simpson, uh, Maris Otter, uh, two point five best smoked. 
braids, medium crystal, one bag, braids, light roast, or light crystal, one bag, braids brown, one bag, braids chocolate, one bag, uh, Thomas Fawcett, pale chocolate, one bag, uh, two bags, wireman, carafoam. And that's it. That's it for the malt. I think that's yeah. eight or nine I counted, somewhere yeah. around One, there. Two, three, four, nice. Five, eight, yeah, eight. Yeah, eight. Yeah. Love it. It's good. Uh, not, sorry, I just have to keep mentioning our collaborations because I'm happy about all of them. We have one on tap now called 10 by 10. Uh, it's an Imperial yeah. Porter that has 10 different malts. Beautiful beer. Yeah. He, Beautiful beer. He, he, he also, it almost was 10 by 10 by 10. We were going to try to make it 10% ABV, <laughs> but it was getting a little wonky on brew day, and I was like, Let's not fuck it up. Let's yeah. just, 10 by 10 is fine. But I'd be interested for you to try that one too. I will, uh, for cause, sure. Because I kind of agree with your philosophy, but like don't, that you were taught, like let's not, let's let's keep things as simple as we can. Yeah. Well, it works in this though. Yeah, it does. Yeah. This And as I said, this has been a, a, a work in progress for a while since, nice. since yeah. brewery school. Gets tweaked a little bit here and there, but it's, I've always been pretty stoked on it. It's so, a good beer. Yeah. What's the ABV on this? 6.6. Uh, six, six. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So not and we the redesigned top, the can this this year yeah. too, which was yeah. fun. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, yeah, I was just talking to Teresa with Adobe it. software, probably. Uh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sure, it was involved. <laughs> yeah. I was, we had I was, the Starship Enterprise on there. Uh, nice. Non TM. though. Yeah. I was just talking to Teresa about this in the break. It's like when I first looked at this label, I was like, "What is that?" And then <laughs> as I looked at it closer, I'm like, "Holy crap! That's the Starship <laughs> Enterprise beaming, Be- beaming up, a, up bean? a bean of coffee." I'm like, "This is the coolest uh, fucking thing I've ever seen." It really is. No, I, was, like, I, was, I was walking up to the canning line. I was like, "Is that an avocado?" <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. I got. I, 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 yeah, I picked up the can. I was like, "Oh, this is the coolest can I've ever seen." It's in my like life. literally the coolest can I've ever seen. It so, might uh, be deploying the beans. Like, yes. We can't know for yeah, sure. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> no offense to Emily, it's the second coolest can I've ever seen. Okay, all yeah, right. Because, all right, all right. because your other one with my logo on it is way cooler. Yeah, <laughs> but this is right there. It's right there. Well, yeah. thank you for Not being nice. here and, and sharing all this beer with of us. Of course. Thank you for having us. I do have a cliche question for you, and okay. it's uh, partly because I've been trying to ask questions at the end of our shows where we just get to know people outside of their brewing world. Okay. But yours is very cliche. You're making me real nervous right now. Are you a Mad Max fan as an Australian? Uh, yes. yes Did you, have you seen the most recent one? I have. I watched it while I was in Italy a couple of weeks ago. Uh it blew my mind. Yeah. I was like, I didn't think they could... T- We're talking about Furiosa, of course. Yeah. I didn't think they could top the last one. Yes. I think they did. Yeah. And I'm like ready to go see it again. I know this is totally off topic, yeah. but are how are your feelings on this movie? I thought it was great. Yeah. I thought it was great. I'm a big, big fan of all the movies, you know. Same. I like grew up watching those movies and... Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I thought the, the, the latest one was great. I'm so glad to have the validation of a real Australian <laughs> saying that back to me. Uh, so, yeah, same. I grew up with the movies as a kid. Yeah. I have prop, um, like, Goodfellas and Mad Max are the movies I've seen the most in my life, yeah. right? Just dozens and dozens of times. And so, really happy with the reboot. Saw the previews and just wasn't too sure. You know, yeah. they got rid of Charlize Theron and a couple things. I went in just as a fanboy, but not having high expectations. Yeah, I could have watched it again like that night. Oh, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, it'd be nice if they could bring Mad Mel back, but you know, I think he's kind of had his time. <laughs> yeah, I think his um, time is over. Actually, I think his time is over like three times because yeah, he I came think, back and yeah. yeah, yeah. But that would uh, be, you know what? Don't don't count it out. No, I'm not counting it out. Especially yet, the but. way reboots go now. There's yeah. like a reboot for everything, but they're not usually good. No, they're and not. This they're not. Good. Do you guys have any other Mad Max fans in the room? I'm a huge fan, and I haven't seen the new movies at all, so okay. I'm behind. Uh, I thought, I thought the, the, the two new movies were both both pretty solid. Yep. So, yeah, I, yep. yeah. I guarantee you I'm going to love them when I see them, because yeah. I was like so into Mad Max when I was into old cars. Like I had a friend, and we kind of like Mad Maxed out of... VW. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Like, Where are these photos, Teresa? Yeah. I want to oh, see yeah, this Mad yeah. Max VW. You, you, I'll, I'll bring you got the old guitar going up on top? Or? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> big, big tires, big, like, lugs, like, all jacked up. Yeah. Oh, nice. Beautiful. Uh, my friends uh, built my best friend a flame-throwing guitar 
for Burning Man after the first reboot came out, okay. and so and he got to he got to wander around on the front of an art car uh, playing guitar with flames shooting out of it. Uh, that was it was a hit. Okay. Bur- yeah, people were like, "Oh shit!" Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so, Burn- Mad Max inspired. Yeah, obviously. All right, that's my cliche question of the okay. day. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, some quick business to take care of. Don't forget that you can get your free brewing software trial over at Beersmith. Go to beersmith.com. There's a free trial of the desktop version. There's a free trial of the web version. Uh, every home brewer I know uses it, and half of the pro brewers I know also use it. Go to beersmith.com. It'll help you make your recipes. It's the best brewing software out there that's still actively managed by Brad Smith himself, who invented it. So there's updates all the time. It's a, it's a wonderful piece of software for, for home brewers and pro brewers. Go to beersmith.com and check it out. Also, 21st Amendment, Hell or High Watermelon is back. Um, you can find out where to get it by going to 21st-amendment.com. Plus, they have this beer. I don't I don't know. They have this beer called Dodge Your Tears. Hazy IPA, which is clearly like a dig on our, on our baseball rivals, the Dodgers, who just beat us all the time. Um, so go check out Dodge Your Tears Hazy. I'm a little torn on the name. I don't like putting Dodger in anything, but I see that it's a subtle F.U., and so I got to give Sully credit for that. Check out Dodge Your Tears Hazy IPA, 21st-amendment.com. Great beer over there, and I'm just a wonderful supporter of this show. All right, everybody. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Virginia, it's very nice to meet you. Pleasure to talk with you. Uh, I think you're doing good things over there with your sales team, so keep it up. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Evan, thanks for being in the studio, man. Thanks for always being a listener all these years, but it's fun to get to chat with you. Yeah, huge pleasure. This is like kind of full circle moment for me, so super excited to be here. Awesome. Uh, One more thing, JP sucks. Yes. I just want to say that. That a boy. uh, JP sucks. I uh, love it. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) And and, and real story here, uh, first time meeting him was a huge disappointment. uh, 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 True story, uh, right? uh, Meeting you was great. Uh, (laughs) That's been our MO for 20 years. Teresa as well. Teresa as well. This is the first time meeting Teresa is today, and it's been terrific. And it's okay to be disappointed by me. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> huge, huge, o- over, overshot. You know? Ah, wonderful. Well, and then a special thanks for not fucking up our beer. It was really <laughs> delicious. I'm so proud of it. I hope you are too. Uh, oh, great. I'm great. very, very proud of that yeah, beer. Yeah. But Andy, thank you for doing that for us. It really means a ton to me. Go and buy it. I'm not going to celebrate like that again for another decade. Um, and who knows if I'll even be around in another. So this one was a big deal to me. And I really appreciate you being a part of it. And the beer was just wonderful. Evan, you, you took good care of it. So Appreciate that. Thank you. So yeah, we, we babied that beer for sure, honestly. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll, we, not that we don't don't baby every beer sure but, yeah. but you know the, the, the real special ones I, yeah. I, you, you know I'm there with the thank you just the extra love I think go, the beer yeah. can feel yeah yeah. I, I'm dumping with testoscopes you know I, I, I'm hearing the heartbeat of that fermenter I'm, yes. you know, I'm, 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 try, I'm trying to get it through <laughs> it, it shines through I'm glad we have another keg of it that I can enjoy for the rest of this week uh, listeners if you're uh, if you're around the, the Bay Area come into the Hop Grenade because all 10 of our anniversary beers are still on tap and they will be this week week but they're going fast uh so come on out and try them i do want to thank those those breweries i don't think i mentioned everybody but of course uh original pattern as we're talking about uh ultima brewed us grenade juice uh ghost town our friends at ghost town brewed us in a awesome uh, West Coast IPA called Shockwave. They also put my logo on the can, which is really nice of them. That's we got awesome. to go brew with Russian River on their pilot system. Uh, we brewed Cool Pool Pale Ale, uh, which is their, uh, it probably has a different name up at the brewery, I'm not sure, but it's uh, it's off of their R&D series, and that was super nice of Vinny to invite my team to come do that with him. Faction Brewing Company, they, they brewed a, a, a pale lager for us called, um, wait for it, that's what it's called. Uh, that's what Roger wanted to call it so that it would be awkward like that whenever I had to say the beer name. <laughs> it's called Wait For It. Um, Tenma, they brewed us a, a, an amazing Schwartz beer. That's another sample you should get before you guys oh, go. I tried that on oh, Sunday. Oh, you did? Yeah, okay. Yeah, go Tenma. Yeah. Tenma's doing great things yeah. over there. And like Love with that Brennan. one. Love Brennan. I knew that whatever they sent us would be good. That one, I don't know why, was surprisingly good to me. I just yeah. it, one of the best Schwartz beers I've ever had. So they're that doing was, such good things over yeah, there. They're yeah. just such lovely people too. We're yeah. just so stoked for them. Really great spot. Really great team. Um, Win over at Wondrous. He brewed us a hoppy pills called Tasty Pills, a tribute to our friend. Um, 
the 21st Amendment, uh, they sent us their hazy beer, uh, which was our only hazy in the in the whole list, and that was super cool to have too. Um, Bartlett Hall, they brewed the 10 by 10 Imperial Porter, which is the other one I want you to try. Yep. Um, and then last, and, and certainly not least, uh, Chad. Uh, producer Shat, as you would know him, Evan, uh, now uh, is the brewmaster or director of brewing, I suppose, at Bankhead in Texas, and he sent us Janet's Brown, uh, and he sent us like an old school. The version of Janet's Brown he sent is the recipe they brewed with Tasty at Bankhead in 2016. Oh, nice! Yeah, awesome. He said the only difference, the, there's only one minor change in this recipe from that one. And that was that they didn't put any tasty cookies in the mash. <laughs> in 2016, they sprinkled tasty cookies into the mash, I guess. Uh, I don't want to get them in trouble, but whatever. They're just cookies, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, like, an incredibly stellar uh, lineup of beers. Uh, I want to thank all of those breweries, and I just want to thank my staff and my team. Uh, Ten years uh, is, is a pretty big accomplishment in this industry, and I don't spend a lot of time, um, like, sitting back and enjoying that. But I did that on Saturday, and I did that because of uh, all the support we've got so i want to thank everybody who came out to that um your team came out andy and i just really appreciate that it was a it's a big day for us it also i'll say this here's a little secret here's a little tidbit um our biggest sales day in the history of the company oh, that's awesome. awesome which i didn't i actually didn't expect yeah. things things are not that things are not popping off and conquered uh, every day uh, nowadays so We're trending up for the, the, hop grenade. the incredible amount of support and the trend up on that day um I will just say I slept very, very well Saturday night. Passed out very, very well. Let's be honest. <laughs> I was going to say passed out. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, so thanks for all the support um, and and for you know to you breweries for for doing that with us. Uh, just it was just something else. Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. You guys ready? Let's you can go it. have a beer with your team. Yep. Thank everybody for joining us. Uh, thank you for uh, having us. I, I, I really appreciate you all being here. Once again, thanks to More Beer for supporting this show and every show that we do. Um, I've got a couple Firestone Walker shows in the lineup. I just uh, released one from the Firestone Invitational last week, and I've got another one for you next week. Um, I think I'm going to release this show for you guys like tomorrow. I'm going to get this one out real quick so we can get it out there. Um, so stay tuned to the Brewing Network. We've got lots more to come. Thank you, everybody. Take care of yourselves and your beer. The Session is a production of The Brewing Network and brought to you by More Beer. Check them out at morebeer.com. Find more content and live video of this show on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash brewing network. For sponsorship opportunities and information, please reach out to advertising at thebrewingnetwork.com. To reach our hosts, contact feedback at thebrewingnetwork.com. 